you can't miss any of this week's meeting. If you know, you not come tomorrow, go home. Because in this week, we are admitting all of you for financial breakthrough week. It's, it's like we have locked you up in the hospital of finance. I hope you understand me. So in this hospital of finance, you can't come and say you go and go and enter some doubting environment and come back. Oh, Reverend, you can sit down. I'm okay. Oh, you can sit down. No, he has a seat there for you. No, you are not the one to do it. Personally, you are not the one to bring a junior pastor's Bible to the platform. No, Jesus, this is not serving. <laughs> give it to his personal assistant. Uh -huh. Thank you. Can we give the Lord a hand? <laughs> Amen. What was I saying to Pastor Tony? Rudely interrupted me. <laughs> Yeah, you need to be admitted. You see, when your case is emergency, when your case is emergency, you are admitted at the hospital, right? And as I told you, I've seen visions of financial breakthroughs. And my problem is why we are not working in it. And you can attest to it by the church building we are building that as a young, vibrant church, our offerings and everything is little. But look at the work we are doing. It means there is a knowledge somewhere that you don't know, which this week we want to share with you. Now, please, put away all the book long you know. Put away all the so-called things you've been taught in the university. And let's come home to practical knowledge. Take your seats. How can you be singing and the chairs have been arranged like this? Go back and arrange it. Why are you so disorganizing me like that? I just have done nothing. You are singing and your chairs have been arranged and you won't see to correct it. <laughs> Amen. This thing brings poverty. This thing it brings poverty. Amen. So, years ago, one of the things I began to do is to camp pastors after church. Um, every Sunday after church, we used to close around 12.30 and we could be in the office from 2 o'clock to sometimes 6. And within that time, what I was simply doing was we were having discussions, having in-training. And I'm, I've not been surprised to see my pastors being blessed by God financially. And today, I'm introducing one of them to be the speaker for tonight. Amen. I've seen him young as he was. Now he's a big man. I mean, he's married. Big, big man with a fat envelope offering and fat tight. But I've seen how God is to see him all over the world, not only in Ghana. I've seen people call him life coach. I've even subscribed to one of his mentorship programs that sometimes I get email, but I don't reply, so he doesn't know I'm listening to everything he's talking about. Amen. And he's assisted so many businesses. He has his own business he's doing, and he's still working. I'm sure he's doing about four or five jobs at a go. Maybe he will tell you about it himself, working for somebody working for himself and sometimes I wonder why some of us we are so young and we still do one job <laughs> I still wonder how we can survive with just one job today I was talking to one pastor that I heard he has a problem so I wanted to pray for him, what is his problem he can't sleep at night so I said he needs prayer I said no it's not prayer in the night I work I said ah, okay I said some are really sleeping in the night so I believe that if you open up, you'll be a blessing because we are not getting anybody from outside. Some people pay to be in such conferences. Throughout this week, everybody who is coming here is somebody I have seen as nothing and I've seen God raised in the church. 
Amen. Let's be on our feet and receive the ministry of our resident pastor in SCC, Reverend Francis Jonah.
seasons in your hands. You've got times and seasons in your hands. You call for light out of darkness. You call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man. You don't need times and seasons in your hands you've got times and seasons in your hands you call for light out of darkness you call for light out of darkness you don't need a man you don't need a man to be the God you are but you have chosen to call me God, you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place, there's no place. You are God all by yourself. You are God, you are God from beginning to the end. Understanding tonight, even in the name of Jesus. Pray, understanding, even in the name of Jesus. You don't want to leave here the same, so you are praying for the Lord to grant you understanding, even in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, Spirit of the living God. We welcome your presence. My prayer is that none shall leave here the same, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Illuminate our understandings. Grant us strength to be doers of the word, not hearers only. Amen. Give a mighty clap of an to God. Turn to somebody by you. Welcome the person to the house of God and tell the person to prepare for something mighty. Oh, welcome somebody by you. Just turn to the person by you. Welcome the person and tell the person prepare for something mighty. I want to take this opportunity to thank my father and the Lord, Reverend F.D. Allen, for the opportunity to stand before God's people. Amen. I think you can do a better, a better honor than that. You can honor him better than that. Amen. It is a privilege, amen, to be taught mentored and guided by him praise God and upon all that given the opportunity to be able to minister to God's people amen I want to thank all the pastors all the workers of the house amen for the tremendous work they are doing and look at somebody by your entire person thank you too for being here I would like to talk to you today about a simple subject, laying up gold as dust. 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 Are you with me? Can we, can we move on? I'm waiting for those who are right. Laying up gold as dust. I tell people that poverty is not a mystery. Poverty is not what? A mystery. Poverty is not a mystery. If you don't know why you are poor, then there's a problem. Amen. But poverty in itself is not what? A mystery. It is easy to know why people are what? Poor. So if you don't know, by the grace of God, you will know. Hallelujah. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 18. Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 18. Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 18. 
is somebody helping me in the studio or I'm on my own okay let's read together poverty and shame oh I can't hear you let's read together mm -hmm. can I have King James King James not new King James I want King James okay good now let's go poverty and shame. wait 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 poverty and shame shall be to somebody right are you getting me so which two things poverty and what shame they are coming on to somebody hey are you the one oh we'll find out whether you are the one or not poverty and shame are coming to somebody and we want to determine who poverty and shame is coming on to so we want to continue, right? So poverty and shame shall be to him. Continue. Hey. When I say hey, say hey. Poverty and shame are coming. But they come to the person that refuses instruction. Let's go on. But he that regardeth reproof or correction shall be what? Honored. So poverty is not a mystery. The reason people are poor is very simple. The reason people go and beg for salt, pepper, sugar, toothpaste, school fees, rent, is very simple. What is the reason? Help me. Oh, help me. That's not what I ask the person. Do you listen to instruction or you refuse instruction? Hey, it's serious. Though. So the only reason why you are poor, the only reason why shame is coming to you is because you do what? Refuse instruction. And I realize that this wise man is not joking. Praise God. Is he joking? He's not joking. Because he was the richest man in the world. Amen. And he's telling that the reason why people are poor is that they refuse what? Instruction. If that is not the case, ask somebody, when was the last time you gave your tithe? Ask somebody, when was the last time you gave your tithe? Oh, ask somebody for me. Everybody, you have somebody you can ask. Ask somebody. Don't ask the person, when was the last time you gave your tithe? Please answer honestly to the person, when was the last time you gave your tithe? Has the person answered you? Are you getting something? How many of you have heard the instruction of tithes before? How many of you have heard it before? Oh, are you here? Yeah, let me feel you. Amen. How many of you have heard the instruction of tithes before? Is it an instruction? Are you getting me? And those who are refusing, what is happening to them? Poverty and what? It is not a mystery. Tell somebody your poverty is not a mystery. Amen. So today we are going to take instructions. Amen. Amen. Believing God that now that you know that your problem is not that the instruction is not there, but it is your refusal to obey the instruction that is putting you where you are. Now that you are ready to re re receive and do instruction, let us look at the instructions that you need. Amen. Amen. Is somebody free? The Bible said that you shall know what and the truth you know shall do what. Are you now for your poverty. Hey. So all along ago, we've been binding the witches and doing all those things. But the problem, the problem, the problem was who? And your refusal to what? The instruction. It's as simple as that. Is that not why we struggle in everything that we do? That's the reason why we struggle. The Bible said obedience is better than what? It is the same as saying receiving instruction is better than all the gymnastics we do. Some of you can dance more than everybody here. That one, and receiving instruction and obeying it. Just obey the instruction and stop the dancing. Amen. Amen. Laying up gold as dust. Now go to Job chapter 22, verse number 24. Let me show you something here. Job chapter 22, verse number 24. 
I believe that some of you, you've already been delivered already because now you know the reason for poverty. Yeah. That was some of you, that was all you were waiting for. You wanted to know why you were where you were. Father, why? I started with this guy. Yeah, you came to church before the person. But the person receives and obeys instruction. Amen. Yeah. Then shall thou lay up gold as what? Dust. And the gold of offer as the stones of what? The brooks. Now, you see the word then, right? Anytime you see then, it means that something precedes it. Amen. So, in the book of Job, we are seeing that there is something that must be done. And when that thing is done, we will begin to lay up gold as what? As dust. And the gold of offer as what? As the stones of what? Of the brook. So, it means that we will lay up gold as dust or we will lay up gold as what? As stones. Praise God. How many of you want to get to that dimension? These people, how many of you want to get to that dimension? Oh, okay, all of us, amen. May you get there in the name of Jesus. I said, May you get there in the name of Jesus. There is an unction for you to get there, amen. There is an unction for you to get there. So, now, this is somebody in the book of Job who is saying that when you do a set of instructions, you will be able to lay up gold as what? As dust. So, it is like he gave the instructions and said that this is what will happen, amen. But has it happened? No, it didn't happen there. Amen. But I want to show you somebody who made sure that he took that technology, applied it, and began to work in that dimension. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? He took the technology, applied it, and worked in that dimension. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. I want to show you that it is not, it is not something that is hidden in the heavenly realm. That revelation, somebody worked in it. Okay, and the king, we are talking about King Solomon here. Let's read together. And the king, it's interesting, is it only the people that are in church? Those of us, let us read. Full stop. Please, those of us, let's read it. Let's read it. Full stop. Do you see what happened in Job? Job said, Then you shall do what? You shall lay up what? Gold as dust. And the gold of offer as what? As stones of the brooks. Amen. And then the Bible is saying in Second Chronicles that the king made silver and gold in Jerusalem like what? Like stones. As plenteous as what? As stones. So somebody has been able to take their technology from where? From Job and made it what? A reality. Hallelujah. And I pray that when that technology comes to you, you will apply it and walk in that dimension. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that for lack of knowledge, my people do what? They perish. They fail. Hallelujah. And so when knowledge is available, all you need to do is to take that knowledge, apply it, and then you will walk in the dimension or the door it says you will walk in. Hallelujah. But when you refuse that instruction, the Bible says that what happens to you is what we call poverty and what? And shame. Prayer has never brought riches. Amen. Some of you can disregard every law and then pray. It won't work. Hello? Are you getting me? Yeah. So let's go. Because Job is the one that was teaching the technology to lay up gold as what? As dust. And Solomon took the technology and made it happen. Praise God. So we want to go to the preceding verses to find out what he was saying that will cause us to lay up gold as what? As dust. Amen. And in that, I'm going to teach you four keys. Four keys and seven instructions. Amen. How many keys? Four keys, seven instructions. Okay, let's go to Job chapter 22. Let's start from verse number 21. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Therefore shall good come to you. Tell somebody, acquaint yourself with God. So the first key to lay up gold as dust is to do what? Acquaint yourself with who? With God. Amen. Be a friend of God. Know God. Tell somebody, know God. You need to know God for yourself. Hallelujah. When the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If you know God like that, there is no day you ask God, that, God, why are you failing me? How many of you have been there before? 
God, 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 why are you failing me? God, you said you would do this. Why haven't you done it? How many of you have heard that before? Oh, I can't. How many of you have heard that before? The Bible says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Father, I have given and I have not received anything. How many of you have said that before? You don't know God. Hello? God is not a man that he should do what? He should lie. Not the son of man that he should do what? He should repent. When he says it, he does. He does it. Amen. So if you know your God, you will know that he does not say a thing and renege on his promises. Hallelujah. The Bible said that the promises of God, they are yea and they are what? They are amen in Christ Jesus. There is never a no with God. So if you know God, you will never tell him that you said give and it shall be given. I have not received anything. You have received counselors. Amen. The very fact that you said I have given and given. The second giving. How did you get to give the second giving? We always receive. Praise God. I, I can tell you, when I look at my tithe card, I realize that God has been good. Amen. Because I started from the five cities. Amen. And by the time I realized, I had entered into the thousands. And I was giving multiples in thousands. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody at all? But I know where I started from. So it, it means that God is faithful. Tell somebody, God is faithful. If you don't know God, that is when you behave in some way. So he said that the first key to lay up God as that is to know whom has called you. Hallelujah. The God of the heavens and the earth. He said the silver is mine and the gold is also what? It's also mine. Hallelujah. All power in heaven and earth, it belongs to what? It belongs to him. He says, I have given you power to do what? To make wealth. Amen. That is the God we serve. He is telling you this. So if you don't know this God, it becomes very difficult for you to be able to lay up gold as dust. Amen. I remember one day, I used to live at East Legon, and I came to church and it was around 12 midnight and I didn't know how I was going to get home. And Pastor Tony was laughing at me and he said, me, I won't take you. I have a car. Look at my car. I won't take you. And I was saying, my dad, Pastor Tony, man. If you won't take me, why should you come and tell me and laugh at me that you won't take me? Amen. And so my brother, Pastor Charles, came and told me that, oh, you don't know Pastor Tony. He will take you. The very fact that he has come to tell you, laugh at you, and tell you, this is my car, I won't take you, means that he will do what? He will take you. Hallelujah. And because I did not know him, I did not know how he operated. Praise God. By the time I realized I was sitting in the car, crossed my leg, he dropped me in front of my house and came back. I didn't care how he bought fuel and got there and came. I didn't care. Hallelujah. But somebody who knew him told him that once he has said this thing, he will do it. You don't know him. Hallelujah. If you know your God, the Bible said that them that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Hallelujah. Don't do church. Do God. Are you hearing me? You come to church and we are being taught about God. Some of you can WhatsApp when you are being taught about the one you need to acquaint yourself with so that you can get to your next level. I remember one day I came to church. I was coming to see Rev and I saw some people leading prayer and then they would lead prayer and then they would laugh, 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 laugh and then they would be leading prayer and I'm like, oh God. You see, we are doing church, hallelujah. He said, acquaint yourself with who? With God. If you know him, things become easier for you. How do you know him? Study of the word. Hallelujah. Some of you, the Bible has become foreign to you. Do you know that if you read 40 chapters every day, you read the Bible every month? Hey, if you read 40 chapters every day, you read the Bible what? Every month. 20 chapters every two months. 10 chapters every three months. 5 chapters every four months. Amen. Are you getting me? So read your word. Amen. Study the word. It's important. Number two, worship. As you worship, God speaks to you. Hallelujah. You, you, you mix with his presence and his glory. Worship. I'm going fast because there are a lot. There are four keys and seven instructions. So I have to be very fast. The third one is prayer. Hallelujah. In prayer. Your spirit communicates with the spirit of God. Amen. And then you become familiar with him. So that's number one. Acquaint yourself with God. And there are three ways to acquaint yourself. Studying the word, worship, and prayer. Key number one. Do we get it? Yeah. Key number two. Job, yes, let's go to 22. 22 verse 22. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thy heart. That is two instructions. So receive the law from his what? His mouth. So the second key is receive instruction. Tell somebody receive instruction. 
I can't tell you. Tell somebody receive instruction. Receive instruction. Do you know that anytime God wants you to succeed, He gives you laws? Hello? Do you know that anytime God wants you to succeed, He gives you laws? One day He wanted Joshua to succeed. Why did He tell Joshua? Is that this book of what? Of the law shall not depart out of what? Out of thy mouth. Amen. If you want to succeed in marriage, God will give you laws. If you want to succeed in business, God will give you laws. If you want to succeed in ministry, God will give you laws. Wherever you want to succeed in, what God gives you is what? Is laws. What we call principles. Amen. Laws. God gives it to you. Amen. One day somebody was telling me that what we call grace is knowledge. Amen. Hey, this guy has grace to build. Oh. He has grace to build. Oh. The guy has a certain knowledge that causes him to do what? To build. Hey. He has a set of instructions that causes him to what? To build. One day I was looking at a man's phone and I saw a car. The next time I saw the man, he was driving the car. Hello? Hello? Did you hear me? I said, I saw his phone. I saw a car on the phone. The next time I saw him, he was driving the car. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? It's not, it's not magical. It is something they know. That causes something to be activated in their lives. Amen. Grace. Receive the law from what? From his mouth. Tell somebody receive instruction. One of our biggest problems, what we cannot lay up gold as dust, is that we cannot receive instruction. Come early, you come late. Pray, you worship. Worship, you pray. Sit, you stand. Give. You withhold. Hey, evangelize. You de evangelize. Populate the kingdom. You depopulate the kingdom. Hey, we can't receive instruction. Our problem is stubbornness. Say stubbornness. Hold somebody's shoulder. Shake the belly. Tell the person stubbornness. Hold the shoulder. The shoulder. The shoulder. The shoulder. Shake the belly. Say stubbornness. He said, receive the law from his mouth. There are certain instructions. Amen. How many of you have gone to Rev and said, Rev, can you give me the instructions to follow to get to this dimension? You can't, Rev, anoint me, anoint me, anoint me, anoint me. The anointing is to work in a certain direction. Hallelujah. The anointing is to work in a certain set of instructions. Amen. So go to him and say, that, Father, can you teach me the way? Because when Jesus came, he said, I am the way. Because there is a way. Nobody goes to this destination. The destination called where? My father. Except through who? Me. Because I am the way, the truth, and what? And the life. Amen. Tell somebody there is a way. There is a way. My God, I was talking to a friend of mine. He said, I'm going to build in one year. I look in his account and I realized that he was lightweight. Amen. He was what? Lightweight. I was there. Two years later, he sent me pictures. The house was at lentil level. I said, Jesus, 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 help me. It is not about the account. Hallelujah. The guy had some revelation. He said, all you have to do is get, get a plot of land. Buy one trip of sand. Buy one trip of stone. And the spirit will possess you. Hey. He said, get a piece of land. Buy one trip of sand. Buy one trip of stone. And the spirit will do what? Will possess you. Hey. That's not what the instruction and that spirit has possessed me. Amen. Amen. By following his instruction. A piece of land. One trip of stone. One trip of sand. And a spirit to do what? Possess you. <laughs> Receive what? Instruction. Are we okay? Number three. He said, lay up his words in your heart. Lay up his words. It talks about meditation. Meditation. One of our biggest problems is that we don't continue in the word. When you finish Sunday service, you throw the word away. And so you have been a Christian for 30 years and there is no word in your heart. Meditate. Continue in the word. Continue in the word. Like this thing we are teaching you. Huh? You will leave it and go and 
take something else meanwhile the thing that you have been taught is the key to cause you to enter into what into wealth and prosperity amen but the problem is that you will not continue in it amen i was telling some people yesterday that they will take shatawale song and listen seven times today and tomorrow they'll listen how many times and then the next day they listen how many times and then when they are walking they are singing it when they are walking they are singing it when they are in the word of god after hearing it today they don't buy tape they don't buy anything they don't do anything praise god you need to meditate continue in the word hallelujah can i pastor Charles, can i do I have permission to say something one day somebody gave me a tape concerning the law of sowing and reaping concerning which law and i brought the tape home and by the time i realized i went to school and came back when i came back the tape was torn and they had used cello tape you know those days we were not using cd we were using tape cassette eh? it was torn and they've used cello tape to go around it and they were still it was still in the cassette player amen so i asked my brother why why have you molested my cassette he had listened to it more than a hundred times amen he said my brother when i listen i rewind rewind and put it up how, how many of you can listen to cassette it tears and then you sell it to go around it amen and then you listen again hallelujah oh praise god just the law of sowing and reaping amen and by the time i realized that thing had eaten into him meditate on the word the reason we meditate on the word is so that we can do it amen oh praise god that is what God told Joshua. He said, Meditate on the word so that thou mayest able to what? To do according to what is what is written therein. The reason you are not able to do the word is that you don't meditate and continue in it. Amen. <laughs> I remember when I sowed one of my most powerful seeds. I listened to a message 15 times a day for seven days. Amen. How many times? 15 times a day for seven days because I was not convinced within me. The message was saying that when you give, you receive. I said, no, for the way. Hey. He said, when you give, you what? You receive. I said, stop, stop that thing. Tell somebody, stop that thing. You give what receive. I had to listen to it 15 times a day for seven days before I was convinced. When I was convinced, it caused me to move. I called and bought fuel and filled somebody's tank. And I didn't know that the car didn't have a normal tank. Hey, praise God. You know normal tank, when you buy 100 cities, the tank is full. And this guy was a criminal to the extent that he didn't tell me <laughs> that the tank was what? Double tank in one. As the car was filling, I realized that, hey! It's kind of hey, then. Hey! Come with me. Get. by the time the car was full my money was finished as i paid it i didn't even want to look at him I, you are going and go i'll see you later one week later somebody came handed me a car free of charge <laughs> The reason I did it is that I continued in the word till the word caused me to move. Amen. Some of you, you have seen something. You saw, you read the book of uh, uh, Kings. You read the book of Chronicles. And you realize that Solomon offered so much sacrifices that God visited him in a dream. And God told him that, Solomon, what do you want so that I will do it for you? And he said, hey, I want to enter that dimension. But for me to give this kind of sacrifice. Mm. No, 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 not me. Amen what you need to do to enter that dimension is meditate continue in it read 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 until it enters you and moves you hallelujah am i talking to somebody at all it enters you and that's what and moves you read about paul paul saying that in fasting oft in prayer oft that means that he was often praying but you don't like praying you don't like fasting but when you continue reading 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 by the time you are like it will cause you to do hallelujah are you hearing me meditate because meditation is what causes you to take steps heal the sick raise the dead cast out devils cleanse lepers you read it once that is why you have not been able to move amen but as you read every day you meditate on it every day by the time you realize you have moved into certain dimensions and you are causing that word to be a reality in your life are you getting it wonderful key number four 23 if thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. 
Then thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Amen. Watch this. You see, the reason why we see healing of headache as a miracle is because we have not returned to God. Amen. Hello? Healing of headache. The Bible says that it is for newly born again people. Is that not the case? Is that when we preach, them that believe, them that what? After you've preached to them, the people who believe, them they're born again, the new people became born again. This sign shall do what? Shall follow them that do what? That believe. In my name, they will do what? Cast. Those things are for, but because you have not returned to God, when somebody does it, then you'll be calling their name, Obama, Obama, Obama. You know, there's a prophet like that. Obama. Prophet one, because he has caused headache to do what? Tell somebody, return to God. Return to God. And he says, remove iniquity from what? From your tent. You see, sometimes the prayer we are praying, God bless me, God increase me. Stop praying that prayer, amen. And start praying that, Father, empty me of pride. Hey, I was talking to my father and he said, he was teaching me some of these prayers, amen. He was actually teaching me some of these. Hey, Charlie, Jesus. Our prayer topics are different. To tell somebody different prayer topics. Father, increase me. Meanwhile, in your tent, there is what? Father, empty me. He said, he has taken our infirmities. Actually, the infirmities there is not sickness. So it is weakness. Hello? Yeah, the infirmity there is not sickness. It's, that's why he said, he has taken our infirmities and carried what? Our sicknesses. Amen. The infirmity there is weakness. So if you have a weakness, you can come to God and say, that, Father, strengthen me in this area. You have carried this in infirmity you have carried this weakness help me in this area hallelujah because more often than not these iniquities are a result of satisfying our appetites amen oh praise god appetites amen and if you can deal with the appetites you will be free from this word iniquities amen does somebody deal with the appetites so he says that after we have done these four things verse number 24 then you shall do what lay up gold as dust amen now you have these four keys but the key is that the, the the main thing are in the instructions tell somebody instructions i can just say instructions so i'm going to give you seven instructions amen quickly the first instruction the instruction of work how many of you work how many of you work oh just give me a wave offering if you work give me a wave offering wonderful <laughs> ask somebody by you why do you work To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 28. Oh, did they tell you why they work? Okay. One of our biggest reasons why we are not able to prosper or lay up good as work is that we don't know why we work. Amen. And today I'm going to settle it for you. Praise God. Because when I settle it, working will be easy for you. Even if you are not working, you will come and work. Amen. All right. Ephesians 4, 28. Can we read together? Let's go. Hmm. Are you getting it? He said, if you are stealing, stop stealing. Praise God. And do what? Work with your hands. And after you work with your hands, so that you do what? You'll be able to give to him that word, that needeth. Amen. Do you see why we work? Well, I should explain it. I should break it down. We work so that we can have to give. Hello? We work so that we can have to do what? To give. That is why we work. If you have another definition why we work, you will go into poverty. Amen. We work to do what? To give simple we work to do what to give and when you miss that law you realize that you struggle unnecessarily do you know why your prosperity is not in the work your prosperity is in the giving uh, God, God, do, sir. you didn't hear me uh, your prosperity is not where it is where that is why two people can sell asana and for 20 years the person 
will be selling asana and there is no prosperity why because the blessing is not where in the work the blessing is where in the giving you work so that you can have to be able to work to give so that when you give it shall be multiplied to you hallelujah but because you feel you work so that you can take care of yourself and your family all your work even the tithe which belongs to god you say no i will struggle with him with it you don't know why you work help me are you getting it we work the primary reason we work is so that we can have something to do what to give because the, the blessing the prosperity is not in the work the prosperity is in what is in the giving so when you miss that instruction you have missed a lot if you know that you will struggle with god for tight you are not working to chop the money you are working to fulfill certain conditions amen I finish working, they pay me. I know why I'm working. I'm working to give my tithe. I gave it. What I need to give are seeds, often. What I need to give are those who need it. And then, if I have to manage the small, I manage the small because the important things that will cause me to prosper, I have done them. And then, by the time you realize, you begin to move from one level to what? To the other. Am I talking to somebody at all? We work to do what? I can't hear you. We work to do what? That is all. You've been working. How, ask somebody, how, how long have you been working? Oh, I said, ask somebody for me. How long have you been working? 20 years now, 10 years now, and you still don't see anything. Why? Because you are working to do what? To chop. And that is the problem. But if you had discovered that this revelation long time ago, you would have known that your prosperity is not in the work. Your prosperity is in what? It's in the giving. That is why you see people who are selling oranges and they are prospering financially. And you are working in the bank upon all the money that is coming to you. You still know they see anything at all. They pay the person 500, they pay you 3,000, yet the person is prospering and you are where you are because out of the 3,000, you will buy shoe, you will buy this, you will buy mobile phone, you will buy air conditioning in your room, you will buy everything for yourself and by the time you realize, you say, this tight crap, it will pay for the air conditioning, electricity. And then the one who gets 500, puts the tights there takes another 100 cities, gives the offerings and everything, and then takes another 50 and then gives it to the needy. And by the time you realize, the person begins to prosper because of what the person has, what has given out. Because they know that they are working to do what? To give. And God begins to bless their giving. And it comes back unto them. Good measure. Press down. Shaking. To, running over. Shall men begin to do what? To give to their bosom. Hallelujah. By the time you realize, this orange seller has another idea. And then he moves on to the next level. And then he knows that she has to give at that level. And she increases her giving and her title and by the time you realize she moves to the last level and you who started at three thousand at the bank because you work to chop you are still chopping and you remain at three thousand by the time you realize she has overtaken you selling oranges why because we don't work to chop we work to give what are you talking what are you talking why do we work Nobody can finish working when they pay them and they take their budget. Food. Electricity. Water. Refreshment. Snack. DSTV. Transportation. Girlfriend. Chilling is the refreshment. It's coded. Coded. Side chick there. They've not gotten to that level. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Do the budget. Finish. There is no tithe. There is no giving. There is, there is nothing. They have finished their budget. Charlie, the economy is tight. You are operating by your economy. If you knew the economy of God. If you knew the economy of God. That is the economy Solomon operated. So that gold can be like stones. We work to give. Oh. Hello. When I discovered that, my giving changed. Hello. I realized that all along I had to give. But because I was ignorant. Hello. I said, because what? I was ignorant. I didn't have to give. 
But when I, the revelation came, hey, it was like light had come unto me. Amen. It was like a burden had been lifted. Praise God. Am I talking to somebody at all? Lifted. Now the giving was easy. Amen. Because I knew. I told somebody I knew. You see, when you know something, nobody can take it away from you. Nobody can come to Facebook and, and tell you anything. Praise God. Are you getting the first instruction? Are you okay with it? How many of you have started repenting? Oh, I want to know. How many of you have started repenting? You will work, you work, bam, but you, you're tight. You struggle with God. You don't give. You don't, because you think it's the work that will bless you. It is not the work that will bless you. It is your giving that will do what? That will bless you. I don't mind fasting for one week so that I can give from what I get from my work. Amen. Because I know the blessing is not in the work. The blessing is where? In the giving. Number two, second instruction. The instruction of the tithe. Malachi 3.10. Let me show you something. Malachi 3.10. Let me show you something. Are you okay with the work? So if you don't work, and those of you who don't work, come to church and work. One of the things the devil doesn't like is that you are coming to the church to work, to depopulate his kingdom. He will give you another work quickly. You didn't hear me. Did you hear me? I said, if you don't have work to do, come to church and tell Rev, Daddy, please give me work to do in the kingdom. The day he gives you work, you will get appointment. I, is it not last week? I asked somebody to come and do a three-day fast. After the three-day fast, I said from Monday, start working in the church. After the three-day fast, he said, Daddy, I can't come and work in the church. I said, why? He said, after the fast, and he said, as you come, I've gotten a job. I said, hey, this kid here, and Reb has been telling us for a long time that even if it means coming to work for free, come and do what? Work for free. The day you say you are coming to work in the church, you get another job. Because which one should I oppose? The one that you come and affect my business. Or the one that you promote my business. At least, if it won't go to go, it should go to where? The other go, go, then go in. And go corner. He will give you another job. Go, go and work so that you don't have time to come and what? Do the work of God. Number two, the instruction of tithe. Now look at something. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that they may be meat in my house. And prove me, say, prove me. Hear with, say, the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. All that part, guys, not me. It's not sweet for me. This is the part that is sweet for me. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. If you like, forget all and meditate on this. That there shall not be room enough to do what? Receive it. And somebody can read this and tell you that the tithe is not uh, is past. The tithe is this. The tithe is that. Praise God. I understand. We are in the new covenant. Amen. But this thing is too sweet for me to lose it. Praise God. It is a principle. Praise God. It is what? A principle. It predates the law. Because when Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek, there was no law there. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? There was no law. The, the scriptures cannot be broken. Praise God. Why do we still meditate? Is it just in the Old Testament? Do you know? Do you know that even Malachi hmm, is a prophecy? Go and read the book of Malachi. You'll be surprised. You think Malachi, Old Testament, Old Testament. When you begin to read Malachi, you see Malachi prophesying about John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a, the book of Malachi is a prophecy. Amen. Are you getting me? And you read this sweet thing. Praise God. Hello. No, let me ask you a question. If, I will, if you do something for me and I will give you a blessing that you don't, you don't have room enough to receive it, will you hide that thing from me? You know that the wisdom of God, the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. The foolishness of God. After you spend your time, how do you feel? Oh, help me. Look at somebody. Ask the person. After you spend your time, ask the person, how do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? Uh, do you know the funny thing? Do you know the funny thing? Do you know the, the, the people who are struggling with the tithe, the tithe is 10 cities. Hundred cities, hundred cities, amen. Hundred cities, hundred cities. Actually, these hundred cities can do a lot too. Master, to the glory of God, now we receive tithe of 5,000, amen. 
Oh, praise God. Now, if you are struggling with 100 CDs, did you not read the Bible? And he says that if you are not faithful with little, who will entrust you with the true riches? Riches in the kingdom are entrusted. They are what? I can't, they are what? I have to trust you. Let me give you an example. That's right, come. Solomon, come. These two people, this one is Western Union. This one is MoneyGram. This one is what? This one is what? I want to send Pastor Charles money. So I sent $5,000. I want to give him $4,000. I know that if, oh, Pastor Charles, listen. So, when I send the $5,000 through Western Union, Western Union takes $3,000 and gives Pastor Charles how much? I can't hear you. Okay. When I pass MoneyGram, MoneyGram takes five hundred and sends Pastor Charles four thousand five hundred. These two, which one will you trust? Oh, which one will you trust? MoneyGram. So I'm bringing the money. Hey, Westin, Westin. I will see you later. MoneyGram. Then he takes his own. Sends Pastor Charles home to him. So now I realize that I can trust this guy so that always the 4,000 or more can reach Pastor Charles. But if I pass it through this guy, he will take what he wants and give what he wants, or sometimes he won't give anything. He won't give anything at all. Hello. That one, I'm talking to somebody. At least this one gives some. This one gives all. But you, how many do you give? Nothing. No, it's not nothing. No. It's what? Nothing. You give what? Nothing. It's a different dimension of nothing. Praise God. So who is going to trust you? Please give them a clap of it. Who? Who? Ask somebody. Who is going to trust you? Even the hundred cities, we can't trust that it will get to Pastor Charles. Hello? No, you think you're... Sometimes when I see people who go and buy food and say, ah, this food, I bought it with my money. Stop joking. If God decides that the F will not yield, you will have money and you will go to buy food. You won't get food to buy. Amen. That is why we say that. Never think. He said, it is God that gives you power to do what? To make wealth. Amen. What are you talking? I, I, I use my money to build. What if earthquake came and that land you went to buy, it destroyed that land? Which land are you going to buy to build? Hallelujah. God is the source of everything. Hallelujah. Never for one day think it is your work. It is not your work. You might wake up. Look, people wake up and they can't walk. True or false? Oh, is it not true? People wake up, they can't talk. People wake up, they can't lift up their left hand. They can't lift up their right hand. And you, you wake up and you can lift or you go and work and you think that I have worked and gotten the money. Stop joking. Stop joking. It is nothing you have done. It is God Almighty. Hallelujah. Give his due to him. Who can you? You need this sweet thing. And you still struggle. What is happening to you? Hello? I'm not talking to somebody at all. The painful part is that you use 30 cities to take taxi because you are late for work. And that 30 cities was your tithe, which you refused to give. That's the painful part. The painful part is that your car gets spoiled and you go and you go and pay 450 cities for the car to be repaired. And that 450 cities, 200 of that was your tithe. You couldn't give that tithe, but you were able to pay 450 cities to repair the car. Who will trust you with their true riches? That is why some of us, we know we are entering into the economy of laying up gold as dust. Hallelujah. Because God can trust us. Are you hearing me? God can do what? The tax is 50,000, we will bring it. 100,000, we will bring it. One million dollars, we will bring it. Hallelujah. Look at somebody, tell the person, I, I will bring it. I said, Look at somebody, tell the person, I will bring it. And if the person looks at you in a funny way, tell the person, I have repented. Who will bring it? Destruction of the tithe. Praise God. Now, it's very simple. You can't look at this sweet state and still be struggling with God. It is your refusal of that instruction that is keeping you in poverty and what? And shame. Number three, third instruction, your offerings and your seeds. I'm going quick because we have 
But are you getting it? Hello? Is somebody being blessed? Offerings and seeds. The Bible says that he gives seed to the sower and bread to what? To the eater. Help me. Please, the two people come again. Come again. We are talking about 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 10. Quickly, 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 quickly. Stand here for me. Stand, stand. One person should stand here. Bread to who? Bread to who? Those of us here. Bread to who? Seed to what? Now, what happens to bread? When the bread comes and you eat it, what happens? It's finished. What does God do to seed? Multiplies. Verse is it 10. Go to 10. Let's see. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. Bread for what? And multiply your what? So when it is a seed, it is what? Multiply. When it is bread, that is what? The last stop. Ask somebody, do you have bread or you have seed? You see, you work and you eat because you think that the money you got from your work is for you to eat. No, it is for you to what? To seed. It is for you to give so that it can be what? Multiplied. What does God do to seed? He multiplies seed. Hallelujah. We are clapping, clap unto God. Multiply seed. If I must fast and hunger to be able to have seed to be multiplied, I will hunger and give what? My seed. Praise God. Some of you can look at your and say, this is my last. And you chop it. This is what? My last. And you do what? Go and ask the widow. What did she do with her last? She gave it to the prophet. Hallelujah. Because she knows that as long as it is a seed, it will do what? It will multiply. Daddy. Forgive us, eh? You thought this and thought this. We thought we were cheating you. We refused the instruction. And then to the glory of God, we struggled enough and then we came and realized that, ah, that is it. Amen. And then we started giving the seed. We started giving off. We started giving it properly. Amen. Because sometimes, we, we, hey, hey, young people, are you here? Young people, are you here? We are wiser than the old men. In our own eyes. And so we will go through our school of what hard knocks until we realize the true instruction. Amen. Are you getting me? Please clap for them. Watch this. I want to break a condition here. Amen. I want to break what? A condition. And it's a condition of one city. Praise God. It's called the condition of what? Or the lowest acceptable amount. Can I show you something? Please stand up for me. My brother, please stand up. Salome, please stand up. Please look at these people. Are they wonderful? Look at Shepherd Sam's suit. Praise God. If shepherds, you know, those people wear this suit and come and give one CD. Tell somebody it's not the suit. Do you know some people also dress like my brother? Come and give one CD. Do you know somebody comes like Salome? Comes to give one CD. Anna. Is it Anna? Anna, please get her. You see her hairstyle. People use this hairstyle and come and put one CD inside. Hello. Can I say something? It is not because they can't give more than that. Oh. It is a condition. Look at these people. They are at different income levels. Different social statuses. Different places they are working. But they are all conditioned to bring the lowest acceptable amount, which is one Ghana city. And so you see those in suit dancing and putting the condition inside. Say the condition. And those without suit dancing and putting the condition inside and the person who took uber to church of 30 ghana cities dancing and putting their condition inside and you think it's because you don't have it is not because you don't have it is because there is a condition that is operating in the body of christ where the lowest acceptable amount is what they bring it's a condition and tonight i pray that that condition is broken in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, 
Please sit down for me. Give them a mighty clap of friends. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know that those days we used to buy watch a 50 pesos? True or false? Today, you only get watch a 50 pesos. One CD. But do you know that four years ago you could buy watch a 50 pesos? So now you can't buy watch a 50 pesos. But do you know four years ago you were giving one CD? Don't look at me like that. I know. I said four years ago you were giving one CD. Look at somebody and tell the person, Pastor is lying. <coughs> of course, I know I'm not lying. Pastor, have you been there before? Don't do that. Don't do that. Have you been there before? Yes. Pastor Richard is my witness. Praise God. I, will be, I, I was making more than Pastor Richard. When he gives one CD, I compete with him with the one CD. Me too, I give one CD. What are you talking? Until I read the Bible and said, whatever you have you want to give purpose in your heart. Purpose where? From that time, <clears throat> my offering increased from one CD. It increased through the cities. Now it is in the hundreds. Amen. I'm not talking to somebody. Because every year I purpose to increase the seed, the offering, so that the harvest will also do what? Increase. If you don't make that decision, that condition will plague you till you die. That one city condition. I said it's a condition. Are you hearing me? It's a condition. Change your offering. Look at someone. Tell them and change your offering. Look, make it conscious. If, if every six months you need to change, when you change your offering, your harvest will change. Yeah, the Rev says it all the time. Again, let me ask for forgiveness for you people, not me. Yeah, forgive us. He will say, if you want to change your harvest, change your seed. I'll say, hey, look at it. We should change your seed. We'll bring the seed. How many of you have not heard if you want to change your harvest, change your seed? And up to today, your seed is still what? The same. Meanwhile, the, you used to buy watch that you've changed the amount of the watch you buy. The electricity, you have changed the amount. The rent, you have changed the amount. You have changed the amount of everything. And the offering is still the same. Why? Because it's a condition. Do you take one CD to the watch seller? But you take one CD to the church. Because Greb has not said that from today, we don't take one CD offering in the church again. That is what the watch seller said. And so you don't take one CD there again. True or false? I think in church we need to start announcing those things. No one CD in the church again. When you are coming, you will change your offering. But because we think where there is the uh, Spirit of God is there is liberty, that liberty is killing you. That is why God gives laws to everybody who is great. Look at everybody who is great. They have a certain consecration. Either they are praying three hours a day, or they are reading the Bible six hours a day, or they are doing this. They have laws that guide them. Hallelujah. But you are dancing where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. And even the dance that people are dancing, they are not dancing unto God, though. They are dancing unto themselves. So because you can see some of the styles, you realize that this style here, and they laugh at those of us who are dancing unto the glory of God. But those who are dancing unto the glory. And unto God. And then those who have learned the art of dancing. It is not unto you are taking your own glory, amen. I'm not talking to somebody. They come, they come and do all the stuff. Eh? It's not unto you. And those of us who they say we don't know how to dance, Pentecost elders. You have no idea. Tell somebody you have no idea. Instruction number four. Instruction of praise. Mr. Right. why are you pushing the time like that? So it's pushing the time to finish. Instruction of praise. Psalm 67, verse number 5 to 6. Psalm 67, verse number 5 to 6. Quickly. Are you there? Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Tell, tell somebody, let all the people. Praise thee. Wonderful. Six. Then. Tell somebody then. You see the, the word then again. It means that when the top doesn't happen, the down doesn't happen. Praise God. When the top doesn't happen, the down doesn't work. So when praise happens, then shall the earth yield her increase. You know why there's no increase in your life? You can make more, more than anybody. Things are hard, though. 
This offering come, come to give cry. Mm. These are hard though. Nothing is working. No. The economy there, the, you can't complain from morning to evening. You will complain, 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 complain. And they call you complain. It's a French term for complain. Complain. He said, when you praise, then shall the effort yield her increase. And if and God, even our God, shall do what? Bless us. When you praise, you are watering your seeds, your offerings, your tithes, hallelujah. You are watering them, praise God. And as you water them, your increase will come speedily, hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Your increase will come what? Speedily. Your problem is that you don't praise. They say lift up your hands and worship God. Lift up where? And you think that the pastor has bow. Or then, that is why he has lifted up his hand. But you don't understand that lifting up of the hands is even a technology in the spirit. Amen. Because when they went to battle, Moses did not pray. All he did was that he lifted up his hand. It's a technology in the spirit. That is why some of us, when we come, you see, when a spiritual person comes into an auditorium, he begins to cry within himself. Do you know why? Because as the worshiper is worshiping, he doesn't need to say, lift up your hands. Because in the Psalms, you see David telling us, lift up your hands, lifting up holy hands and all those things. Amen. It's a technology in the spirit. So when a spiritual person comes into the auditorium and they are worshiping and he sees you doing this, he, he begins to cry within him because you don't understand the technology of lifting up hands. Because when Moses lifted up his hands, the Israelites began to do what? Win in the battle. Amen. Have you ever seen a child who needs help before? They don't even say, help me. All they do is this. Two of us. And when they do this, what do you do? You carry them. Why? Because it is a technology in the spirit. Sometimes when you go before God, you don't need to talk. You don't need to do what? Talk. And they see some of us kneeling down. And they think that we are too spiritual. We are not too spiritual. Amen. Because the ones standing and praying and the ones sitting, kneeling and praying, they are not at the same level. It is like we are running 100 meters and we are starting at this point. Once the person kneels down, the person is taken here. And you, now you are standing, you are still there. And when the person lies with the face on the floor, no one the assembly say, Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These emotional worshippers, they are not emotional worshippers, they understand the things of the spirit. They that worship God shall worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Am I talking to somebody at all? The instruction of what of praise so god is saying that when you praise that is when your food shall yield what it's increase amen tell somebody praise praise now let me show you something habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 19 habakkuk 3 17 to 19 praise although the fig tree shall not blossom it means that the business shall not do what shall not work neither shall fruit be in the vines the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no head in the stores. It means that nothing is working. Is it not true? Nothing is working. 18. Yet, say yet. I can't hear you. Say yet. You see, this might not be working, no, but the instruction of the prophet says that yet. Despite the fact that the economy of the world is down, the business is not working, things are not moving on, there is no money in my pocket. He said, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Why? Why? Is it that despite that things are not going well, he said, I will rejoice and I will joy in the God of my salvation because it is a technology. Tell somebody it's a technology. Nothing is working. The Lord God is my strength, and He will make my feet like high hind feet, and He will make me to walk upon my high places. Are you seeing it? So when things are not going well, He said, "Praise," because when you rejoice and you praise, He will cause you to walk in your high places. This is what it means. It means when things are good, praise, and when things are not good. Because that is how to yield increase in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. For it to manifest in the physical world. Paul and Silas, when they arrested them and they beat them and they put them in prison, was it a good situation? 
but they understood that yet will I do what? Rejoice. Hallelujah. And as they rejoiced, the Bible said that they came out of their prison. May you also come out of your own prison in the mighty name of Jesus. Look at somebody. Tell the person, stop complaining. The Israelites complained and the Bible said that 4,000 of them were killed. It took Aaron to bring the incense and the censer and stood between the living and the dead for the death to do what? To stop. So some of you, you are killing your seeds. You are killing your prosperity because you complain more than anything in this world. You think you are the only one who doesn't have money in your pocket? Ask and they will tell you. Hello? Ask and they will do what? Pastor Charles, do you remember those days? The handkerchiefs, there were two. One was here and one was here. This one was for the face. And this one was for what? For the shoe. We could walk. Hallelujah. No money in the pocket. We will walk. And then when we get to the place where we are going, you clean your shoe and then you do what? You enter. You, you are... We get to be praised. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody at all? You think you are the one who doesn't have money in your pocket? When we didn't even have money, we said we were billionaires. Hello? We said we were what? Billionaires. The money was in the account, but it was not in the pocket. I said it was where? It was not where. So whether things are good or things are bad, do what? Right. My time is up. Amen. But I have five minutes. Let me tackle the last one. The, the rest here. Yeah. As we come, amen. It is a clinic. This is a hospital. Amen. So as we come, we'll be treated very well. Take this one. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 8. The instruction of doing good unto others. The instruction of doing good unto others. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 8. Knowing. Tell somebody knowing. You see, there's a place where you come to. What is the color of this microphone? Oh, I can't. What is the color of this microphone? Do you believe it or you know it? I can't hear. Do you believe it or you know it? You need to come to the place of knowing. Knowing that whatsoever good thing man doeth the same shall he receive of the lord whether he be born or free whatever good you do you receive of the lord praise god the day i come and look at you and say what is your school fees and i pay for you don't be shouting and say hey pastor is good or pastor is good oh i know i know this guy is generous. This guy is too good. No, the guy is operating by revelation. The guy is doing what? Huh? Sometimes some of you, you are living in compound houses and they say something is spot. They should pay. Everybody should contribute 20, 20, 20. And then a man says, the way you people are not paying, it's not anything. I will pay. Amen. And then he takes his money and pays everything. And say, ah, bro, when you are you, bro, you are ignorant. If you knew, you would tell him, don't pay. I will pay. Knowing that whatever good you do unto others, you will receive the same of who? Of the Lord. And when the Bible says that the same of the Lord, don't be deceived. The same of God, the scale of God is not the scale of man. He said, my thoughts are higher as the heavens are above the earth. So are my thoughts above what? Your thoughts. Amen. So when you are receiving same from God, be ready for something extraordinary. Hallelujah. You don't give to a king and receive the same. When the same say, what you have given to me, you are getting the same. You are, you are, hey, hey, hey. amen. If you understand this, you will not come to church and see somebody's shoe that is torn, and then you go and hide in the corner. Chalo no. <laughs> no. You take money, go and buy a shoe. The next Sunday, as you are coming to church, my brother, you are blessed. You give the person the shoe. I will tell you, don't take it. Don't take it. I, I tell you, run away from the tanks. Hello? Run away from what? Why? Because you will receive of. You don't, don't expect anything from them. Amen. Expect from the Lord. You are coming to church and you see that somebody's shirt is torn. Buy a shirt and come and give it to that person. There should be nobody in need in the house of God. Hallelujah. Because somebody's supply is with you right now. Rev was giving us a revelation. You didn't catch it. He said that the church building there, we here are the ones who did what? Who contributed to it. Do you know why? Because every resource for the building is here. Every resource for the building is what? 
is here. Just that some of us are, we don't understand law. So we are sitting on what must be what must be provided for that thing. Look, do you know that as you are sitting here, your school fees is here? Hello? Amen. Your school fees is here. But the person supposed to bring that school fees is saying he has opened savings account. Praise God. And God is talking to the person. Present the fees to this guy. Present the fees to this guy. And then you say, devil, shut up. I remember one day, I had given 40,000 to some people. Amen. And I was praying. And God said, give the money to them. I left the room I was praying. I said, ah, this satanic room to give me negative influences. I went to another room. And God spoke again. I said, eh, I don't like that. I stopped praying. What are you talking? But finally, I gave it out. Amen. And I had more than necessary. More than what? Necessary. What am I trying to say? I am trying to say that God says when you do good to others, you will receive of the Lord. Don't expect from man. Are you guessing it? The rest, we are in the clinic. We'll continue. Let's rise up on our feet. Wonderful. I do a signal. I thought they said I should close. Amen. Amen. Please, are you getting me? I understand this. Look, let me let me tell you. Let me give you a practical example. Recently, I was praying. told me that the percentage we are doing I should take off and pay for the transport of all the percentages. Somebody, those days I said the devil is a lie you shut up. But when I heard this one I said God thank you. I called Pastor Rich I told him that from July I'm going to pay for all percentages. Every week I will pay. Amen. As I was sleeping I said no 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 no. July is too far it will hinder my blessing asking so what did i tell him I, when i got to sunday i was packing when i was packing to the church i packed my money into my pocket i got there they gave me the list of all the persons i said jesus i paid amen the next week i paid the third week i paid i was sitting there and i had mobile transfer onto my my phone amen see some of us uh momo it doesn't come it goes hey I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, Momo, it, it doesn't come on. It actually goes out. But when I started that dimension of taking all the percentage, the money that jumped onto my Momo, I began to speak in tongues. Some of you, eh, the reason your tongues is maka, mako, mako, maki, maki, is that you are not applying the laws of sowing and reaping. The day you understand the loss of sowing and reaping, something will fall into your account and you begin Makari Mahandali Musa Handala Mahande. Something will change within your spirit. Are you understanding me? I said, when they say so, I now run. I'm looking for people who can pay their fees. Because it is work. Amen. It is work in the kingdom. Are you hearing me? We are looking for needs. The painful part is that I wanted to pay for all. By the time I realized, a certain wise person had already taken one. Amen. So I'm paying for all minus one. Because somebody had the wisdom to also what? Pay for one. I went to the children's service to go and find the need there. I realized that they were refreshing the children's service. But they never came to take church money from church to give refreshment to the children's service. So I was going to find a house so that I can continue. They, they shut their door to me. They did what? They shut their door. We should allow you into that blessing. Forget it. People were handling it. They had discovered something. Hallelujah. You are here. All you can think about is you yourself. That is why you, you will work 30 years. Because according to your salary, by the time you build a house, you'll be 722 years. Don't look at me like that. I calculated it exactly. Amen. I have the figures. <laughs> true of us. I said true of us. That is why you need to begin to apply a higher law. Tell somebody a higher law. 
They say save. And uh, Master, there is a higher law. Praise God. The law of doing good unto others as unto who? As unto God. Why do you work in the church and there are needs in the church and you cannot meet them? By now, the one to tell the church should be gathering momentum. Hallelujah. Because the money is there. Some of you, it is in that car that every week goes to repairs. I said that car that every week goes to repairs, takes 200 Ghana. Go and sell it and put it down. Say that this is the town's money. And the car you will drive, we will ask you which work do you do? And you say, I do the work of the Lord. It is the, some of you that thing is in your cloth. Me, I've told people that me, I'll never be broke because one day I entered one of my rooms and I saw a bag there full of cloth. Holland. The day I realized that I'm in a little trouble, I will carry it. So it. How of you know when you saw something that does not belong to you, sweet? So it. You have more than 50 cloth there. That is your breakthrough. Tell somebody that is your breakthrough. I will, I will never forget the day a friend of mine who was poorer than poor had a laptop and when the prophet said bring an offering that is valuable to you this guy was carrying his laptop i wanted to hold him and said that brother is a mistake put his laptop on the altar got a job the job gave him a contract he went to do the contract and he met somebody there and that person began the guy's breakthrough now the guy has money like water he was doing car rental they stole the car and he was laughing i said they stole one of his cars he was doing what he was laughing <laughs> as unto the Lord, amen. As unto that, he understood the laws, amen. Do it as unto God. And can I say something? At every level, you can be a giver. The woman with the two mites, Bible said she gave more than everybody. Do you know why your tithe is important? Because God looks at proportional giving. Pro. I have 100, I give 10. You have 2,000, you also give 20. Are we the same? No. The one who had 100 and gave 10, proportionally, is that operating at a certain level. Amen. Praise God. The next instruction. The instruction against waste. Instruction against waste. Proverbs chapter 28, 29 verse 18. The instruction against waste. Jesus performed the miracle. This one you didn't buy with your money. So if we've eaten and we've left fragments, why do you have to carry it? Why have to, you have to gather it? Praise God. We did, did they pay for the five thousand five loaves of bread and two without a multiply? Did they pay for it? So if you didn't pay for it, why do you have to gather? Some of us we can waste. We can do what? You one person when you eat, you buy egg. You buy macaroni, you buy chicken, you buy wele, kontomire. Praise God. And, and do you know the painful thing? Can I tell you something? Those of you who when you close, you go and stand in front of the church and you eat more than your offering. Somebody tell the person, shame on him. I said, Look, I tell the person, shame on him. Can I say something? Do you know that we fast eh, to be able to give the kind of offering that will change our lives? Uh, I, I'm not talking to someone. You don't know what some people have done, no? Pastor, I can't give more than one. We fast so that we can give the kind of offerings we do what? Witnesses here. Now, 40 days, I didn't eat anything. Praise God. So that we can give the kind of what? Offerings we want to do what? In the morning, you eat five CDs. In the afternoon, five CDs. In the evening, five CDs. That's how much? 15 CDs. Why can't you fast one day and give them pray and come and talk about that? I want to change my dimensions. So this is my 15 CDs offering. Because I fasted one day. 
but you will eat all right and bring your one city again. And when we put one city and you close, and even your God is not one city. Do you see why it is a condition? Because you go out there and buy your God one city, 20 pesos. At least let your offering match your yogurt. At least. The annoying part is that they buy meat by two. But now meat by one doesn't reach. Pastor, are you talking from experience? Yes, former experience, not present experience. Because they will tell you, do you see me buying your God empire? No. The instruction to avoid what? Waste. You, you can't give offering of 20 CDs every Sunday, but you have put air conditioning in your room. It is waste. Are you hearing me? Your bills are more expensive than your seeds. You are wasting your seeds. Look at a woman who can do her 100 cities and has not given offering of 100 cities before. And then the annoying part is that they go and say they want something called bone straight. Tell somebody, Pastor is helping you. Tap the person, tell the person, Pastor is helping you. I pray for a generation that can come and say that, give me bone straight money so that I will offer it unto the Lord because I know that is what will bring my multiplication. Am I talking to somebody at all? I am looking for a generation that will say, I want to give an offering of thousand cities every day. Come watch me, oh God. I am looking for that generation because that generation will lay up gold as dust. You don't mind going to the seamstress and paying 1.2 million. Don't mind coming to the altar of God and saying that, Father, because you are my source, because you are my multiplier, because you are the determiner of my destiny, I offer this sacrifice unto you, O God. Multiply it unto me. We are looking for that generation. That doesn't mind. I won't take Uber. I will wake up at 6 a.m. and walk to church. And as I am walking, my God, I go shakatayaba, my topalika, the God that multiplies it. And by the time you get to the church, you have not wasted the 40 cities because we have the leg bands. You come and you sow your seeds. Every Sunday you have, and can I say something? When you understand the revelation, you do it joyfully. I say you do it what? Joyfully. Because God loves a cheerful word, giver. And then you begin to do those things. By the time you realize, you don't know what is happening, but your levels are changing. Amen. Rev will bear me witness because he knows where some of us started from. Hallelujah. And where some of us are today and where we are going. Hallelujah. He knows. It didn't come by just coming. It came because some of us understood certain things and began to make certain sacrifices to be able to get there. Tell somebody, stop wasting. Do you know that the food you eat morning, afternoon, evening, you are wasting some? The evidence of waste is that there is a washroom in your house. How many of you have fasted before? Fasted before? Water only. Do you ever visit the washroom? You've not wasted anything. Hello? You've not done what? Wasted anything. But when you begin to eat more than necessary, you will visit that place to take away what? The waste. The fact that you are visiting the washroom tells you you are eating too much. This is not a technology of the spirit. It's the technology of the flesh. Look at someone. Tell the person fast. To give the offering that will change your life. To give the seed. Look, some of you must say that, Father, if you can give me my first thousand CDs, I will offer it to you. Some of you, the day you had the first thousand CDs, you change your phone from Android to iOS. Waste. And that was your breakthrough. Are you hearing me? I said, that was what? You are going to buy Jordan. Jordan. When there were three holes in our shoes, we were still coming and giving offerings that could buy shoes. Now we have a room called shoe room. Shoe room. Shoe room. 
No, there were three holes. I remember one day a prophet asked me to kneel down so that he would pray for me. Rev, there were three holes in the shoe. So as the prophet said, kneel down, I said, prophet, isn't there another way to impart the anointing? He said, no, this is the only way. So I knelt down. And then the evidence of my prosperity. Am I talking to somebody? Tell somebody it is time. We want to lay up good. The thing we are doing is small. You see, dust, then eh? when you clean dust, it comes again. That is the level God is taking you. And the reason you know it's true is that in Solomon's economy, God was like stones. Hallelujah. I said, God was like what? Stones. It was unimaginable to me some time ago for somebody to give me loan and I'll take tight out of it. But at my level of understanding, I'll even give more than tight. Because do you know that in the spirit realm, there is nothing like time. You know, there is seed time and harvest. And between seed time and harvest, there is time. Praise God. Hello. But do you know in the spirit realm, there is no time. Hello. In the spirit realm, you plant the seed, the harvest grows. It is up to you to draw it. Hello. And by the grace of God, we have the teachings. You know how to sow. True or false? Do you know how to water? How do you water? Praise. But you must learn how to harvest. Because a lot of us think that the sowing is our responsibility. But we don't know that the harvesting is also our responsibility. And the watering too is what? Our responsibility. So by the grace of God, you know these three technologies. You know how to sow. You give your offerings, your seeds, your tithes. You know how to water. Whether things are good or bad, you are praising. You are where you are worshiping. You are on the floor. You are giving God mighty praise. And then you know how to harvest. How do you harvest? You call it forth. Amen. You send forth ministering angels. Amen. Because the Bible said in the, I think in the book of where the, it's in Matthew, where it was talking about the sower went to sow. He says that the angels are what? Are the reapers. Amen. So you send forth ministering angels to do what? To bring forth your harvest. Because harvesting is a conscious effort amen so as part of even our services every sunday we, we, we water amen and we do what we have there's a session for watering and there's a session for what for harvesting every week we do it amen because in the realm of the spirit your harvest comes immediately the seed is there that is why when they took the rods and the rod of Aaron, it was able to what to germinate and bat the same day because in the realm of the spirit there is nothing like time that is why jesus christ was slain from the foundation of the world hallelujah there is no time there the guy was killed before he was killed is that not the reason why when you meet an urgent need in the house of God, your needs come quickly. You are like, hey, this kind of need here, yeah, it causes my harvest to come fast too. Yes, because in the realm of the spirit, there is nothing like time. Actually, before you even prepare your seed, your harvest is ready. Your harvest is just connecting the seed to you. Your seed is connecting what? Your harvest what? To you. Because the harvest is already, isn't that Jesus that said that the harvest is already what? Right? Isn't that Jesus that said it? The harvest is already what? There is nothing that God is about to do for you. Everything is done. He is waiting for your obedience so that he can do what? Connect to it. When Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac, the Bible said that when he got there and was about to sacrifice Isaac, God said, no, 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 no. It was your obedience I was looking for. Now I have seen that you can obey me. That is the harvest. The harvest, the supply is already there. Hallelujah. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Those riches are not about to be created. They are already there. And God is looking for the man that can connect to it. Amen. Forgive. Forgive. I think I've exceeded. Let's rise up on our feet. Amen. Give a better clap of an unto God. Do you know what will bless you? Do you know what will bless you? Get the message. Listen to it five times a day. Listen to it what? Five times a day. Every day. Till you begin to put it into practice. And when you begin to put it into practice, look, when, when you know you have gotten a message, eh, you will have your last five CDs, and Indomie will be smelling your nose. And you say, nah, this is my next level seed. This is my next level offering. Are you understand me? Then you know that the message has what? Has entered you. You know the message has entered you when you call Rev and say, Rev, that big car, I want to fill the tank. 
And then when you go to the fuel station, he clears your salary away, amen. And the tank is still not full. That is when you realize that you are entering into that level. Am I talking to somebody? Lift up your hands unto God. Say, Father, help me to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Say, help me to use these keys and instructions to lay up good as dust. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. See what you have learned in prayer. There is always the enemy who try to steal. Pray, Lord, I want to know you more. First key, I want to know you for myself. I want to study your word, worship, and pray. Lord, I want to receive instructions from you. Instruct me on what to do. Instruct me on what I need to do. Anytime God wants to take you to your next level, he instructs you. He gives you laws. As the Holy Spirit, help me to store these instructions. John NLT says that listen to his instruction and store them in your heart. You don't just listen, you store. That is how you, you get that gold as dust. You store them. The instruction you forget will never help you. Return back to God. Tell God, I am sorry. <coughs> I have not kept your laws. I've been selfish. I've not been doing as I need to do. Thank you for reminding me of your will today. I return back to you. That is the fourth point. Now pray to God, Lord, help me to work and meet needs. Pray. I want to be able to meet needs. I want to be a faithful titer. I want to be a faithful titer. Not a titer. He says, bring ye all, not some, all, all the tithes, not some, not the ones that might be known. First Corinthians 16 verse 2. You must give according to what you have purposed in your heart. Purpose in your heart. Breaking the pattern of the one Ghana city. Give the new King James of this one, please. Or King James. Mm. This one, Lord, I want to be a praiser. I told you that the master key for your harvest is joy. You sow in tears, but you reap in joy. If the time of your harvest you are not in joy, you will not harvest it. 
I want to be a praiser. Help me to do good to others. I didn't say think. Michael, open your mouth and pray. I didn't say wonder. I said pray. I want to stop being a waster. I don't want to waste any more resources. Zubaba kataba zingete zundani makata banam. Jibigiti bigiti bigutu bugutu bugutu bigiti 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 bi. Amen. Now let's look at um, Ezekiel two two. He said, "The Spirit entered into me when He spoke unto me." And he set me upon my feet. You are going to pray that this message you have heard will set you up upon your feet. This message you heard will set you up upon your feet. Will set you. You see, if you receive the message, he said, the spirit entered into me when he spoke to me. If you really heard him speak, it must set you up on your feet. And you are not talking about being set on your feet for three days or one week or two weeks. You are talking about being set on your feet forever. Not going down again. So you are praying that let the word that you have heard today become like a spirit that will set you up on your feet. It's like, it's like your, it will make your car do and spark. It will give you acceleration. You can, you can hear something, but if the thing doesn't set you upon your feet, then you didn't hear it. If I say clap, can you clap for the Lord? If you clap, then you heard me. So if I say prosper, if you don't prosper, you didn't hear me. You didn't catch the spirit of what I said. So say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word today. It has entered into me. I decree and I declare that it will set me up upon my feet. Nothing will take me down. I've been set upon my feet to prosper. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Rubo baba 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 bisia Zubikete bande katadaba Ro Ziki dibi dibi yanda di bada Zine de be de be As you have heard this message the enemy is angry He doesn't want you to know this Peter said, we grow in knowledge to gain grace. The knowledge you have acquired today is the reason why you will gain grace. Second Peter one two put on the screen. What you have heard today is what is going to give you grace. Grace and peace will multiply to you in the knowledge of God. The knowledge you have acquired brings you grace and peace. Grace and peace will multiply to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. The knowledge you have acquired is what is bringing you grace. Dig. Yes, we are fasting. This whole week we are fasting. Yes, that is true. But you are not just fasting. You are fasting this week for your prosperity. You are fasting this week for you to obtain certain grace. You can break the back of poverty with these points. 
we have lived it, I have lived it. The patriot in the Bible lived it, and you can live it. Generational curses will be broken, ancestral poverty will be broken. Grace and peace can be multiplied to you. Zubidi kata pata kata pedeve, zigi di biko to pedeve deve. Raya faraman sanka da ba da ba, zingi di bigi di bidi bi. If something told you that what this man of God is saying is not true, he's trying to deceive me. He's trying to lie to me. I want to tell you this: fight, get this message again and listen, because the stronghold in you is what he's speaking. There's a strong pattern in your spirit that is trying to contend with the truth that has come to you. There is an agent of the enemy trying to resist your finances. Ziki te peto kota bete ke te be rampa takata ne ke te bronda zinteri bigi di kato bedia pray any point that he said that you fell away there you took it literally you don't really agree with what he said it says it's a contending of your faith it's contending for your heart it's contending for your soul. Satan doesn't attack anything. He only attacks what works. Oh, don't speak in tongues. Don't worship. Don't pray. Anything Satan attacks is because it works. Oh, Holy Spirit. You are my comfort, strengthen me, hold my head up high, and I stand upon your truth. I'm bringing glory unto you, and let the peace of God. Let it rain, Father of life, you draw me closer, Lord, my eyes is set on you, let us run the race of time. With your life unfolding now, and let the peace of God let it rain. Oh, oh, Holy Spirit, you are my comfort. Strengthen me, hold my hand. And I stand upon you. We tell the truth of His word. We bring in glory on to you, and let the peace of God let it rain. Oh Lord, I hunger. Oh Lord, I hunger. You must desire more. Rise up within me. Rise up within me. 
Let me know your truth, oh Holy Spirit, oh Holy Spirit, such to bear my soul and let the light. This teaching is the life of God. Feel me now. Let your healing power reap life and make me whole and let the peace of God Oh Lord, I hunger Oh Lord, I hunger for more of you Rise up within me me. Let me know your truth. Let me know your truth. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. Such a rain. My soul. And let the light fill me now. Fill me now. Let your healing Breathe life and make me whole and let a peace of God. The last prayer. After this, we take our offering and then we are out of here for today. Now, we are going to pray. You are going to commit any work you do into the power of God. Any business you venture in. You are telling God that you are having one of the points is that let us return to God. So you are telling God that you are reenacting your covenant with him when it comes to your business. We are sorry for not obeying his rules on business. We make him our senior partner. From today, he should instruct us. From today, he should lead us and tell us what to do. He should pardon our past and bring us a fresh and a new beginning. Let's lift up our voice and begin to pray. Get into a new covenant with God when it comes to your business. When it comes to what you do, the work of your hands. Tell God, I need another chance. You said in your word that we should return to you. I'm returning. I'm returning back to you. Help me to be entrusted. If he can trust you, that's the word we heard. That if he can trust you, not if the pastor can trust you. No. If the Lord Jesus can trust you, then he will give you the true riches. It is not if the church will trust you. He knows you better than anybody. So he wants to trust you. You are saying, Lord, give me another opportunity. I ask for another opportunity. I ask for another opportunity. Another opportunity. I'm returning back. I soak the business, every part of the business. My workers, my staff, my boss, every aspect, my salary, my income, my tips, my going out and my coming in. I hand it all over to you, my customers, my clients, those are holding trust for people. Ziggy, <laughs> 